Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our physics engine. We are coding a physics engine from scratch in C Sharp. Definitely something that I'm doing as a hobby, as an amateur, not something that I do professionally in, in any shape or form, um, even the programming, uh, anything like that. So it's kind of a new adventure for me, and I, uh, I feel like I'm learning a lot, and I hope that you are too. But uh, I'm definitely not infallible for anything. And uh, but basically, I'm, I'm researching physics and how the physics engines work, and I'm trying to implement it myself and uh, doing it to the best of my uh, current understanding. So I appreciate anybody who's uh, following along, and I hope that you're learning stuff as well from this. Maybe even some C sharp things or just general programming observations as well. But uh, definitely the physics engine stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next step in our engine. Uh, let's see what we left off with here. So we can drop bodies uh, into the world. You know, they're relatively realistic resolutions right now. Um, when they fall off the edge, they're, so it's creating bounding boxes around everybody. And when they fall off the edge, they get removed from the list. And we can see that because uh, in the previous video, I made the ability to uh, print to the console. And you can see we have 13 bodies, that circle falls off, and now we're down to 12. And as they fall off, they just get removed from the list. So let's go back to our code. In this video, what I want to do is I want to increase the accuracy of the physics engine. And actually, I'm going to run this again. So if we start stacking up boxes here, um, you can see up to a certain point, it looks pretty good, right? But you can see it's just starting to sink. So if I, if I have just a couple boxes stacked over here, um, it looks really good. I put three, still looks pretty good. Four, uh, it starts to sink. Five, now, you, now you're noticing the bottom um, rectangles or boxes are starting to sink even more. And the more I put on there, you're going to see that everything's going to start to sink. Um, and this just has to do with the accuracy of our engine right now. The, what I want to do now is increase the accuracy of our uh, collisions and our resolutions. Okay, and actually, it's going to be the accuracy of the, the whole step, the whole physics step. And uh, then I'm going to add a, a stopwatch around the physics step, and I want to kind of track the performance of it. Okay, how long does it take for us to run a single step? And, you know, as I add more bodies here, we can see it, it really starts to sink uh, into the ground like that. Okay, so let's go back to the code, and let's talk about what we're going to do here. So I'm going to move back to the physics, let's see, the world. I'm going to move back to the flat world class and up to the step function which is the step function is our main function for doing all of the movement and collision resolution, uh, collision detection and collision resolution. And I'm going to pass in one more field to the step function. I'm going to call this the, um, the number of iterations. Okay. The number of iterations for the step function is basically going to indicate how many sub steps do we want to perform every time the world steps through the, the, uh, the movement and collision step. And so I'm just going to put a number in here, and we call this uh, iterations. And basically, it's just it's a number of sub steps. So we're gonna we're gonna start dividing the amount of time into these sub iterations, and then moving them by smaller steps. And let me go ahead and draw what that looks like here. So uh, let's just say we have a box, and it's falling at such a speed that one iteration would take it from here down to here. So here's where it was before, and then after the iteration is down here. And so that's how fast it's moving. But basically, if we pass in a value that we want to move the, everything at uh, two iterations or two sub-steps, um, then the box is going to move something like this. It's going to move here first, um, and then it'll move down here. The physics simulation will actually record all of these steps. All right, and you can see the accuracy increases. Uh, the more we do. So if I then I say we have three substeps. So if we start here, um, then it's going to move maybe here, and then here, and then here. And so it's just basically moving them by smaller increments every time. And this is at the the price of more processing power, right? Because that means every time we run the step, we have to do three or four or five or ten or twenty more of these, all these computations, right? So this one, it just did it one time. This one, it, ta it takes two times the processing power. And then this one takes three times the processing power, okay? Because we got to go one, two, and then three. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and implement that. And then let's go ahead and also put a timer or a stopwatch around our uh, world step function just so we can start seeing 
I guess, a general idea of performance. How long is it taking us to run each step? All right, so let's go back to our code. We have the number of iterations that we want to use. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll up here to the top of the flat world because I also want to, I guess, define a, a minimum and a maximum for the number of iterations that will be allowed. These are gonna be some uh, static read-only values. And I'm gonna have a min iterations. And we'll just make that one. And we'll have a max iterations as well. And this one's kind of up for debate. I think maybe the max I'm gonna have is like 64. Or if we really want to go crazy and out, allow a lot of iterations, maybe we could have 128. You know, I'm just going to leave that at 128 for now. I mean, our engine will support basically dividing up the current time step into 128 pieces. So basically, every time the objects move, they'll be moving at 1 128th, the total amount that they're supposed to move in that frame. So, all right, so let's, let's just leave it there. Uh, maybe we're going to back and change that, but we really don't want this value to get too high because then we're going to start running into uh, problems with processing, right? But 128 is, is a really high value, and I think that'll be definitely enough, maybe even 64. Let's put it there for now, and we'll just do some performance testing as we do this. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to clamp the number of iterations that the user has passed in. I want to make sure they're within the min and max values, so let's just use our uh, flat math clamp function. I will pass in the iterations, and then we just want to use the uh, min and max for the iterations. Okay, so now that we have that value, um, oh, and it looks like, okay, so we have a clamping function for floating point, but we don't have it for um, integers right now. So let's go ahead and go back to our math library, or our math uh, class. Um, and I'm just going to copy the, um, the clamp function that we have for floating point. And uh, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this, and I'm going to tell it that I want to change all of the floating point um, keywords to integers. And that should make it so... Okay, so it should all be the same code. It's just now operating on integers since we're passing in the uh, integers for values. All right, so that's good for that. Now back in our world. Okay, so now this works because we have one for integers. And so now, now all I'm going to do is this whole movement and collision step, I'm going to wrap this whole thing in a for loop. And the for loop is going to be how many iterations that we want to loop for. So I'm going to make a, an IT for iteration, the current iteration. We're going to start at zero. And while the IT is less than the number of iterations that we want, um, iter IT will be incremented. Okay. And you can see I'm just, I'm just wrapping everything in this, this for loop for iterations. Okay. And then the other thing we need to do is before we handle the collision step, uh, we need to look at the movement step, all right? And inside the movement step, this time value here, we need to um, divide it by the current, or we need to divide the time step by the total number of iterations, okay? So basically what we're saying is, um, if the iteration count is one, it's gonna move at the full time step. So inside the step function for each body, let's go ahead and go to the definition of that. So here's the step function. Um, and actually, I'm going to move the is static um, Boolean uh, check up here, just like that at the top. OK, and so now I'm going to add one more field here. I'm going to pass in the, the uh, number of iterations. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the time that's passed in. I'm going to divide that convert it to a floating point, and divide it by the iteration count. And what that's going to do is it's basically going to say, um, here's the amount of time we want to move, but here's the amount of time we want to move on this iteration. Basically, we're, we're making the time step smaller based on the number of iterations that we are performing. And so then we, when we divide the time step by the number of iterations, um, and then we multiply all of our movement code by the time step, so now we're going to get the much more accurate movement. Okay, small because it's going to move at smaller iterations. We're basically doing our all of our physics checks at very small time steps. Okay. All right. So back in our flat world, um, here is our body step. We need to pass in the number of iterations. Okay, and I think from there we should be um, good to test it out. Anyways, uh, so let's go ahead and run it, and let's just see how our stacking looks now. Okay. So there's an error somewhere. Where did I miss? Let's go ahead and take a look. Now I'm back in the game class. Um, what I didn't do, so here is our update function. Let's go ahead and scroll down to where the uh, where we make the time or the world step. 
uh, we need to pass in the number of iterations. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and pass in 20 for the number of iterations. And now let's go ahead and run it and see if our stacking looks a little bit better. Okay, you can see everything seems to act normally. There's, it looks just like it did before. Um, but now I'm going to start stacking them up. And you can see I've got five stacked up here. And we used to start seeing some syncing happening here. But uh, at five, we're still not seeing that syncing happening. And I can start putting more and more on there. And, and you can see with 20 iterations, uh, everything looks really good. We're not seeing the um, issues of body syncing right now because everything's moving at such a small amount every time that the collisions are more likely to get resolved in the correct order and at the, uh, at, with the correct normals and all that kind of stuff. So um, that looks really good. In fact, let's start stacking up stuff like this in weird ways. <laughs> Okay, so that looks really good. The, the next thing I want to do is I want to start uh, recording some performance values. So here I am in the game class. I'm going to make a stopwatch. I'm just going to put this as a field for our game. I'm just going to call this watch. Uh, so let's scroll down to our initialization function and just uh, right here at the top, or let's see, down here at the bottom, I'll go ahead and create the new stopwatch. Okay, and then down inside of our update function, I want to record how long it's taking for us to do the, the step. Okay, so here's our world step. I'm just gonna tell the watch that I want to restart. And then right after we do the step, I'm gonna tell the watch that I want to stop. And so that's just gonna tell us how much time has elapsed uh, to perform this uh, step function. And then from there, I'm gonna scroll up. Last time I put uh, code that allows to print stuff to the console by pressing the tilde key. And I'm just going to add uh, another field here, or another line of uh, information. So let's go ahead and write a line that's, uh, th and this line's going to uh, tell us how long the physics step took. And so I'm just going to do some formatted code, just like I did last time. I'm going to call this the uh, step time. And then all we're going to do is we're going to pass in, uh, this is the watch. We're going to get the elapsed and the total number of milliseconds. So let's go ahead and round this using the math um, class. And I'm going to we'll call it round. And I'm going to round this to four decimal places, or four digits. Uh, let's go ahead and run that, and let's just see if it gives us some information. OK, so I'm going to move this window over here so we can see both the console and our game, our, our physics uh, project. OK, so if I run this now, it's saying, um, and, and, and remember, this is also in debug mode. All right, so I'm not running in release. This is debug. And maybe I'll switch that over here in a second just to see what numbers it gives us. But in debug mode, it's saying I've got one body. The physics step is taking about uh, anywhere from 0 .0 to 0 0.0023 milliseconds. Um, let's add just some bodies in here that are stacked up just a little bit and see what we get now. All right, so now we've got 29 bodies, and it's saying it's taking us about 2.24 milliseconds. Perfect, so that looks good. And uh, now let's go ahead and run this in release mode, and let's have all the optimizations running. And let's see what, how much time it takes now. OK, so now it's taking about 0 0.0013, 0 0.0015. Let's uh, just add some bodies to the world. Okay, and uh, at 36 bodies, it's taking about just over a millisecond to maybe 1.1 to, well, there's a 2.5. That's probably an outlier, though, so maybe 1.5. 1 1.1 to 1.5 is what we're taking right now. Okay, and you can see, even with uh, 71 bodies, let's, let's just add a bunch in here and just see what we get for some performance, uh, just for some performance numbers. OK, so I'm at 125 bodies. It's taking about uh, just under 10 milliseconds for the most part. Uh, let's add some circles in here and just see what we can do here. So, so right around 13, 14, we're at 136, 100. And this is with our brute 
force method. You can see as the bodies are dropping off, they're getting removed and our performance is getting significantly better because now we're down to 23, 20, uh, 19, 18, you know, and it's, we're, we're under a millisecond for sure now as far as uh, how long it's taking. So I'll just drop a bunch in there. Uh, yep. So, all right. So that's it. Um, the precision of our engine should be uh, much greater now. Let's see, yeah, just over a millisecond, maybe a millisecond and a half there with 30 to 30, 38 bodies or something like that. Uh, so that looks really good. As you can see, performance is become, starting to become an issue as we start adding more and more bodies. We're just using a brute force method right now. And, but pretty quick, I'm probably going to have to start adding uh, some kind of space divider, right, for the broad phase. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to have a grid or a, some kind of grid that figures out where the bodies are in the world and then sorts them into their own individual node, grid nodes or something like that. And then only the bodies that are within your own grid node are gonna be tested for intersections. All right, so we've increased the stability of our engine now and uh, the stacking seems to be working really well. Hopefully um, that will continue as we start to do more and more complicated things uh, as such as adding rotation and friction and all that uh, kind of stuff. But Performance looks pretty good, and we will be able to increase performance as we uh, start to divide our world up into a grid for the broad phase.